Welcome to our series of learning modules that focuses on the value of research in patient care. Our objective is to educate clinical staff on the scientific method and how to apply it to everyday clinical practice. Here, in Module 7, we will explore how to write an abstract and submit it to a professional conference. In this module, we will describe the two major types of abstracts. Construct an illustrative abstract using a quantitative example from Module 2. And show what is involved in submitting the abstract to a conference website. There are typically two kinds of abstracts, structured and unstructured. Structured abstracts contain headings for each major section of a study. In this example, the authors first provide background information on their topic, stating that the role of the sedative DEX in poisoned patients needs to be better established. In the objective section, the authors then state the purpose of their study, which was to describe the clinical effects of DEX use in poisoned patients. Next, the authors describe their methods. They talk about the study design and mention that their primary endpoint was incidence of adverse effects of DEX therapy that included hypotension and arrhythmias. In the results section, the authors highlight the main findings of their study. Among them, median heart rate was lower during DEX therapy, five patients experienced adverse effects during therapy, and 17 patients had concurrent use of other sedatives and or analgesia. Lastly, the conclusion of the abstract mentions the need for further investigation of the safety of DEX, calling for larger comparative studies. Conversely, an unstructured abstract does not contain headings for each major section of a study. In this example, the authors first describe how evidence-based medicine is used to support clinical decision-making, and that research on modeling aspects of publications has led to the PICO structure, and a PIBOSO structure, both of whose conceptual phrases may be extracted by computer analysis. The authors then state that their objective was to classify sentences in abstracts that are reflective of PIBOSO structure. The method statement includes information on the types of features the authors used in their model, and the number of abstracts they used for training and testing. The authors conclude with a discussion of the accuracy of their model in respectively classifying sentences that are reflective of structured and unstructured abstracts. Now we will compose a structured abstract using the first quantitative example from Module 2. Recall that we wanted to know how a low-sodium diet and increased physical activity would influence daily and weekly blood pressure, that we used a prospective study design with two groups of patients and that our metrics were average blood pressure, physical stamina, and range of motion. First, we provide some context for our question. We point out that previous investigations have revealed a link between sodium intake and blood pressure, and we mention that exercise is likely to be an important factor. Next, we state the purpose of the study. Your statement of purpose will often be a terse description of what you wanted to achieve. In this case, our main objective was to ascertain whether decreased sodium and increased exercise would facilitate lower blood pressure over time. We then outline our methods. This section should report the key elements of your approach, such as how you collected your data and what your main outcome measures were. Using a perspective design, we followed one set of patients who took in a clinically standard amount of sodium and who set their own exercise habits, and a different set of patients who took in 20% less sodium and had a more challenging exercise regimen. Our main metrics were blood pressure readings at different time points, while other metrics included physical stamina and range of motion. In the results section, we report our major findings, and as is customary in quantitative research, we save interpretation of findings for the conclusion of the abstract. Here we note that there was a statistically significant decrease in blood pressure for patients that lowered their sodium intake and increased their physical activity. In addition, there were increases in stamina and range of motion for these patients. We also mention that average systolic blood pressure was lower for these patients at several time points. Finally, we discuss the clinical implications of our study. We summarize what we found, namely that decreased sodium intake and increased physical activity led to both lower blood pressure and greater stamina and limb flexion. 
The interpretation we offer is that better patient vigilance with regard to diet and exercise could lower the chances of experiencing high blood pressure and contribute to increased quality of life. You'll often write an abstract specifically for submission to a professional conference. With that in mind, we'll cover the basics of uploading an abstract to a conference website. First, you'll want to identify current calls for abstracts, associated deadlines for submission, and categories in which to present your work. For example, podium versus poster presentations. Which presentation category you select will depend on factors such as the scope of your study, its novelty, and how well it may appeal to a broad audience. Conference websites will usually ask you to create an account to submit your abstract. Getting started is often as simple as clicking on a button. Once you've begun the process, you will need to provide more detailed information for your account profile. This might include your first and last name, work address, office number, email address, professional title, affiliation, and credentials. At this stage, it is also typical for you to declare that you have no conflicts of interest. After entering such information, you will have created your account, and then either copy and paste your abstract for upload or attach the abstract as a standalone document. Sometimes, conferences will even offer resources to assist you with your presentation. For instance, there may be brief tutorials or guidelines for creating a poster or for enhancing your existing abstract. Resources such as these will be especially helpful for those new to the world of research. Now that we've covered the fundamentals of writing an abstract and submitting it to a conference, we'll ask you to reflect on what you've learned. What is the main difference between a structured and unstructured abstract? A structured abstract contains headings for each major section of a study, from the introduction to the conclusion. Which section of an abstract focuses on the implications of a study's results? The conclusion section of an abstract focuses on the implications of a study's results. True or false, submitting an abstract to a conference often involves declaring that you have no conflicts of interest. The answer is true. When you submit your abstract on a conference website, you'll often have to declare that you have no conflicts of interest. This education series is made possible by a generous gift from the Stanford University School of Nursing alumni, in collaboration with Stanford HealthCare, Lucille Packard Children's Hospital, and Stanford Medicine. Congratulations, you have completed Module 7.